Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is absolutely fantastic to be with you on this tropical Monday morning. <laughs> the sun is shining and we're all in t-shirts in the United Kingdom and on our way to the beach. Not. It is absolutely freezing. And you have no doubt noticed I am not Emma Stark with a beard. I am filling in for Emma and I am here with the awesome Mark and the awesome Claire and we are joined by people from all over the world and it is absolutely wonderful to have you all online with us do say hi let us know where you're watching from and share this broadcast so more people can get blessed mark how are you doing doing very well up in newcastle upon tyne where it's sunny but chilly okay and claire how are you yeah i'm good thank you um i am just looking out into the fog and the frost in the garden here so it's uh yeah it's foggy in Teesside okay. and cold, freezing. Yeah, when I got up this morning, um, I had to put the heating on, you know, that, which is like the, you know, absolute uh, last resort, isn't it, at the moment? You're, you're very rich, on, Claire. I had to put the heating on, that's how cold it is. <laughs> And never forget, I was taking a team out to the um, to the Ukraine a, a, a good few years ago, and there was one of the young lasses that was on the team, and she was a little bit easy to wind up, which is always a dangerous thing to be on my team and be that way. <laughs> and we were going out in February, and I said to her, I said, you know, in Ukraine, it's so cold, when you breathe out, your breath freezes and smashes on the floor. <laughs> she looked at me. Does it really? And it's uh, not, not really, no. But it was minus 20. So I always like to remind myself of that. When we think we're cold, I just like to remind myself that there are places in the world that are significantly colder. But I, t I was reflecting this morning, totally different subject. I've been across several places in Europe this, this year. Do you know there's not been one place where the Holy Spirit's not broke out? Oof. We uh, are in the midst. And, and I can't... Woo! Poland, Sweden, everywhere. Yeah. God is breaking out and he's breaking out in the United Kingdom and we're in a good season, aren't we? Yeah. Yes. We're yeah. in a good season. We're in a season of the moving of the Holy Spirit, of all of those meetings that but between, um, what would we say, between July and now, every single conference I've been in, there's been testimonies of people seeing the dead raised. Wow. And it was just awesome. On. One of them, a, a baby dead in the womb for nearly four for four weeks, hadn't moved, <gasps> diagnosed as dead, was prayed for, and the baby kicked and made them st absolutely scared the mother, wow. as you would imagine mm -hmm. if your baby's not moved for four weeks. So I mean, God, I mean that's not just a miracle; that's a creative miracle, mm -hmm. and that is yeah. just extraordinary. So we're in the days of God's power, and in the days of the demonstration of God's power. So let's start with that in our mind. And Mark, do you want to launch us into um, fire and identity and, and yeah. take practices for discovering who we are? <laughs> well, let's do, fire, let's do fire first, then we can get onto pagan practices later, Sam. You can, you can MC it, you know, <laughs> otherwise I'll be here all day, you know. But, but no, I agree. We're in, good, in, in great times. Um, uh, you know, just the last few months, just seeing, um, you know, when we've been doing lots of outdoor events through the Speaks of Life, the network that I run, um, personally seen a lot, led a lot of people to Jesus. And it's wow. been so easy where, where in, in some cases, Jesus actually appeared to people in dreams. And then basically, you just interpret the dream. But actually, you know, 99.9% .9 of the work's been done already. And, and in one case, the person had a dream about the place where they were at that time. They'd had it two weeks ago. And it was all a setup. Does that make sense? Wow. So all you had to do was it, it's G, you know. So yeah. so really, re really the message is we just got to get out there, pitch up, and say yes. And actually, yeah. most of it's been done. You know. So anyway, so it's this whole thing. I was at um, um, a, a, an international global sporting event. I was down in in BAFTA actually about three four weeks ago, not acting or receiving a re award for acting, which I'd love to because I kind of, you know, I wish I was an actor. But anyway, some people say I am not, whatever. <laughs> but I was doing a kind of cosmetic thing down there. And and actually, just the whole thing about the world seems to have got this thing about actually, even though it, things are being um, pressured and there's heat in the battle, they're looking to expand. You know, it goes back to what you were talking about with Emma last broadcast sound about the fact let's not get into our silo mentality this is a time for expansion and for taking yes. ground and and actually you know 
the, the world seems to have got elements of this, right? It, it, you know, why is that? Because there are seers, as Claire was saying, there are people that actually are don't know Jesus yet, but actually they pick up stuff that is out there, yeah? yeah. What God's doing. They don't know it's God. And it's this whole thing about the fact that when, when, you know, when he comes, all right. So what is it about fire and heat? Is the fact that Jeremiah 23, 29 says, is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and the hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. All right. So, so many of us um, have experienced and experienced it at the moment, fire and heat. All right. And actually, um, have you actually asked whether or not when things are being burnt up in front of you saying, God, is this you? <laughs> you could be you could be putting big buckets of water on something and actually God's trying to burn it up and you're fighting God and you're wearing yourself out you know and you're thinking God you know help me in this and you say Mark Mark I, I'm on the fire I'm the fire here don't try and put me out all right you know so 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 what does that mean in terms of um you know fire and, and what god is doing often fire burns up the stuff that needs to be burnt up and actually in the natural there are seeds that actually only germinate in the presence of fire all right and there's you can look it up on the web there's something called south african phoenix seeds there's lots mm -hmm. of uh, seeds all over the place that only germinate and disperse all right disperse is quite a big thing because disperse is replication Mm. all right again talk about the office of something we're meant to replicate all right Come on. so we're meant to kind of you know germinate be born new things but then that's meant to replicate as in legacy mm -hmm. and expand it's not this silo mentality so so what is it about um heat that causes these seeds to germinate all right so think about the fire of god in your life all right don't resist it say okay fire of god come what does it do it makes a seed crack it expands it, all right? Do you feel expanded at the minute, uncomfortable? Let the fire crack you open, all right? And then what does it, what What do the seeds become, um, as it were, vulnerable to? Water, oxygen, and light. Water, river of God. Oxygen, breath of God. Light, light of Jesus. You become vulnerable even more to the good things of God that will cause you to germinate, cause new things, and cause your what god is doing in you to replicate so so and actually when these seeds germinate and actually then replicate and grow the stuff that would choke them all right has gone why is it gone because the fire's burnt it up <laughs> i mean shall i say that again the seeds flourish right because by the time they flourish and the fire is gone the fire above has burned up all the the other stuff that may have been good but would choke up the new stuff that God is birthing through you through the heat and maybe the heat of the battle that you're in. So actually the world has got a little element of it, but we have got the wisdom of God. We actually know what God is doing. We can see what God is doing, the Issachar thing, and actually be vulnerable to the water of God, the river of God, the breath of God, the light of Jesus. So actually you can crack open and actually expand and grow and have a legacy this morning in the heat of battle rather than shrinking in we're meant to expand yeah i mean we really would do so well wouldn't we mark to to to, to pay attention to the devil what I, mean, <laughs> what, what I mean by what i mean by that is this is is when the devil comes to jesus in the wilderness to torment him it says and he went off and waited for an opportune time all that we would notice as God's people, opportune times. Mm. I mean, we're in an opportune yeah. time. I mean, you're talking about testimony of the fact of, of, of God breaking out on the streets. We're just back from Dallas, saw God break out in the hotel reception room, saw God break out in a restaurant. God's not contained to the four walls of a building. And actually, right now, there's a big question in the world that's flying in nearly everybody's head of, why? And we're the people that have the answer. The church yeah. is meant to be the Isaiah 60 people that arise and shine in the midst of the darkness. And we need to recognize that the only way we can shine is if we've got the fire. We need the exactly. fire, don't we, Claire? Yes. Amen. I was just thinking about the, the fire and the heat, just a, a couple of little testimonies. So last weekend, last Sunday, um, I just noticed Duncan Kidd in the, um, in the chat there. Um, I was up at their church in Newcastle and uh, there was a moment in the, the meeting where I, I had a really bad neck. You know where you've um, like 
done something like trapped a nerve in your neck. You've been really bad for a few days. And in the middle of that, there was just a call for healing. There was no drama, no come out to the front and, you know, the minister of God will lay hands on you. It was just gather, you know, lay hands on the person next to you, pray for healing, you know, put your hand up if you're struggling. So I put my hand up and uh, the couple of people next to me prayed, laid hands on me. And I could feel on the side that was um, hurting, I could feel heat coming from this girl's hand next to me. Um, you know, like right down the side of my body. And I was healed. It, it went. Yay, totally praise went, God. You know, Come and on. I didn't go expecting anything. You know, I went ex probably expecting to, to give rather than receive, I suppose. And uh, I was just blown away, you know, just the, the grace of God, the mercy of God in that situation. Something that, you know, probably is fairly small in the scheme of things, but God just moved. And then secondly, um, Another testimony. So I, I've, I'm involved in, I haven't done it for a while, but I've, I'm involved in Alpha in prisons. And um, so I, I was going in regularly to our local prison here um, with, an, with an evangelist and leading an Alpha course. And um, the prison's locked down for the whole pandemic. So I don't know if anyone knew that actually, that prison, this is just a little interesting fact. Through the whole pandemic, you know, most prisons, the prisoners were locked in their cells for 23 hours a day. I don't know if you knew that for nearly two years. Um, so anyway, that's a little aside. But we're running, so we're, we're back in now in, in the prison. With, uh, it was about week four or five of Alpha. But it was the Holy Spirit Day last um, Monday. So we went in and we prayed for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Those men were absolutely blown away. Um, you know, God fell in the chapel in, in the um, prison. The three of them, there was eight men, three of them spoke in tongues. Um, two of them, that was the, very, the first time one had spoken in tongues before and never again. And so three of them spoke in tongues. There was healings. There were words of knowledge. There was prophetic words, you know, amazingly sharp prophetic words and stuff. And it was just brilliant you know and i know mark does a lot of that sort of evangelism and you know and and seeing god move but we we are definitely in a moment where mm. um everything's on the table you know god is moving and all we have to do like you're saying simon is just take that step of faith and seize the moment seize the day and, and start to step out in faith um so yeah, so that was just my, my sort of little intro. But um, I, I really feel that there's a generational thing that God is doing at the moment. So not only is this, um, you know, a time when new things are, are springing up and the old is being burned away, but I believe that there's new, a new generation springing up um, as well. Um, and I was saying to these guys before we came on, you know, that... Um, I, I think it's interesting, you know, we talk about Generation X, Generation Y, Generation Z, you know, and we've now exhausted the alphabet. <laughs> so the, the world has exhausted the alphabet in, in what to call the next generation. And I just felt the Lord say the next generation is my alpha generation. and I'm raising an alpha and an omega generation, the beginning. So do you think we're going into the Greek alphabet now? because we're, we're going into the Greek alphabet, yeah. Well, we're going into the Holy <laughs> Spirit alphabet, um, if there is, which is obviously Greek or Hebrew. <laughs> A little bit of Aramaic, maybe. Um, but yeah, so I, I just feel like God is, is raising a new generation. And I know Mark talked a little bit about identity before we came on. I hope he's going to pick that up, up as well. But, you know, we, we're, we're faced with what well, on, the, on the face of it looks like a generational identity crisis. Young people who don't know whether they're coming or going, don't know if they're male or female, don't know if they're, you know, what sexuality they are. They just, like every area of identity is, is under attack. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it can be very tempting, I think, as the people of God to look at that and think, oh, you know, things are just getting worse and worse, you know, and, and, and be fearful for our young people um, and be concerned that they're lost, you know. I just felt like the Lord said they're not they're not lost. He, he's got them exactly where he wants them. And this identity crisis that we see all around us is God's way of calling up a new generation, calling them back to him 
for identity. Um, when their identity is is you know is um, uncertain, he has identity in him um, for our young people. And I believe that God is is you know is calling a, a great uh, wave of young people back to him. Um, I think we're seeing it a little bit. I've, I've heard recently. I don't know if you saw that that festival Manchester that was on that um, the Lu- Luis Palau or, um, organization was involved in. There was thousands and thousands of people in the summer came to Festival Manchester and thousands, thousands of young people gave their lives to Jesus. You know, it wasn't just like a few hundred, it was over a thousand young people um, yeah. gave their lives to Jesus. And you know, there, there is something stirring in the young people, not only of this land. I saw um, when I was, I was just, you know, looking things up, um, uh, I'll not go into that, but, I, I also saw some some Polish young people that I know um, making some comments on, on different things um, and just felt the Lord say that he's he's also raising a generation in Poland um, of young people who will rebuild the ancient ruins. And I feel that this is a feature, you know, that alpha generation across the world is a Nehemiah generation that God is going to use to rebuild and war Um, with a trowel in one hand and a sword in the other, to war in families, in the family of God, alongside older generations, um, to rebuild the ancient ruins. And, you know, the the world is full of ruin at the moment, isn't it? There's ruin everywhere. And yet in the middle of Joel 2, you know, in that sort of ruinous place when everything's um, falling apart, God says, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. You know, that there's these multitudes of people just waiting to come to him. And I think that's where we are at the moment. There are multitudes in the valley of decision. Um, And God is raising a generation um, through this season of trial and war and, and destruction. Underneath it all, there are these seeds germinating of new growth, new generations rising up in true identity in Jesus Christ, who will take um, the, who will rebuild and who who will know Jesus in a very, very deep and solid way that previous generations haven't known. And will re- and will weep for the church actually as well. I believe that there's a generation who will, God is raising up, who will weep for the church and care for the church. Um, at, you know, where at the moment, you know, I feel like there's almost been a movement away from the church where people are like that, not that bothered. I'm not, you know, even since the pandemic, lots of people haven't come back, you know, but I believe that God is raising a generation who will love the church and will rebuild the church and who will care for the people of God. Amen. Amen. I mean, I, I, I'm just struck with a clear i love reading ecclesiastes because i think it's such a good commentary i love this time it says there's nothing new under the sun yeah and the yeah. enemy loves to cause a big controversy to say this is the thing that's going to end the world but the truth of it is the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof and it's not that we respond to it flippantly but the, mm-hmm. what we do respond to it knowing that god is so wise that he worked into his plan a human being's stupidity that he said, I know you're going to be stupid and I know you're going to come up with these stupid ideas. And then you look at cultures and if you if you do a little bit of historic study, you discover that every culture goes through these kinds of cycles of identity yeah. crisis and all of this stuff. And literally every single time there's then a breakthrough and there's a new move of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And you can just see that God is maneuvering us and allowing us to be moved towards a critical point that there's going to be an explosion, that there'll be a generation of revolutionaries that rise up and say actually we think there is a better way and we're seeing that grow more and more and i believe as god's people we need to maybe 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 we all need to look at it this way we were we were at a meeting over in dallas there's a guy behind me and what was coming off of him was nasty really it was it it was it, it didn't feel happy it didn't feel joyful that's not normally the person that you might naturally feel i'm going to prophesy over that person um i mean maybe the rest of you do but that i mean generally looking for for open heart 
ended up giving this guy a prophetic word, discovered later that nobody knew who he was and he was on the brink of suicide and the ministry he received literally turned things around. Yeah. And I'm saying that to say this, some of the areas that we see are resistant are actually the areas that are the most open. Amen. Yes. Some of the areas that are the most hostile are actually hostile because they're reaching that critical point, like Mark's talking about, that the seed's beginning to crack. And we're mm. seeing a generation of church. And I, I long for the day that we don't have the, it's going to be the younger generation. It's going to be the one-legged, one-eyed people <laughs> who are going to bring the next move of God. How about we believe it's the church, the yes. whole church, the global yes. church. Love it going to partner with God and we're going to see God move, that we're not in competitism with one another, but we are one body moving towards the belief that the glory of the Lord is covering the earth as the waters cover the sea and we are seeing a generation arise already that's mm -hmm. going to continue to arise even greater and it's just exciting to see, like you say, God doesn't have any limits, he doesn't think a prison is a place he can't move he doesn't think a bus stop is a place you can't move. He's actually out to break out everywhere, isn't he, Mark? Exactly. And and it's this kind of whole thing I was thinking when Claire was talking about the kind of the beauty from the ashes, you know. Um, and um, it's I was thinking of, of um, you know, God just burning stuff up and actually looking to see what he's wanting to crack open. You know, I'm, I'm, I've just formed a new business. It's a spin out company from the university that I, I work for. And it's actually a, a beauty company, all right. So, uh, and but actually, I was involved in another business some, some years ago, which was which actually got. I was a founder. It was worth twenty three million Canadian, and it got liquidated, which basically means the shares that they have are worth nothing, all right. Mm. Now that can either make you bitter or better. Come and on. actually, you know, and you can have a pity party, or you can say, God, what are you doing in this place, and everything else. Now, in hindsight, there is beauty from ashes from with that. Actually, in the moment, you you have a choice, and you choose the better way, not the bitter way, and you choose the actual what God, what are you doing in this? And literally, I am now, as it were, operating in beauty, a, a beauty company from the ashes of something that was actually. So you know, I'm I'm living that Isaiah 61 verse three, and so so it's that it's that whole um, aspect. And, and when we do that, and when we allow God to conquer us with his love, I'm quoting from Psalm 117 in the Passion Translation, and that and let his kindness melt our hearts, all right? Come on. We are conquered with his love, so be overwhelmed, conquered, give up now, conquered with his love, and let God's kindness melt our hearts. That begins to form in <coughs> us the identity that Claire is talking about. You know, yep. what does God say who we are? Come on. Right. Ask God what he says you are. Don't ask the enemy because the enemy will come up with a hundred things about what he thinks you are. All right. Ask God what he says you are. And and actually just, just you know, as Sam was alluding to, you know, there are a lot of personality profiling and all this kind of stuff. I run businesses and teams and things like that. And I'm not having a pop at the, 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 all of those because actually it is good to be aware of who we are and how we work together in teams. There's nothing wrong with that. However, there is something wrong in using those to put yourself in a box and Come call on. it a particular letter, all right? And then actually say, I can't do that, even though God is asking you to, because I'm a, I'm a letter. I'm a T or a J. Or, right? right? or an English letter. <laughs> no. Hebrew. This is Hebrew. Oh, yeah. Hebrew. Oh, that, yeah. That's right. Unless you, yeah, yeah, exactly. Unless you're Alpha Omega, right? Okay. So. <laughs> So because actually in scripture, it says with all things, you know, uh, God, with all, you know, with all with God, all things are possible. But what you're saying is when you put yourself in a box and call it a letter, you're saying, well, all things are possible with God, except that I can't do that because I'm a T. All right. Or whatever you want to call it. And some of these personality tests have their roots in demonic influences. All right. You know, I've been looking up things like Myers Briggs and things that are actually that has roots in Jungian um, philosophy, where actually he had all his revelation through demonic encounters. All right. So, so therefore, I would say, why don't we listen to what God says about us rather than what man-made stroke demonic stuff says about us? I'm not having against anything that allows us to kind of work together as teams, but actually, I would rather say what God says about me. And going back to Claire's generation, because that's then calling the generations 
who they are into whom into how god's made them to be not how a man-made system has actually boxed them in it's almost like some sort of you know horoscope type stuff where actually you you're this and you'll always be this and you'll never be that well my bible says with god all things are possible so so amen and ask the god for all things are possible to say who you are who are you this morning yeah yeah i mean it that i think you think about gideon you think about moses you think about jeremiah god seems to have the habit of going so you're not that so that's what i'm going to get you to do exactly mm-hmm. that's exactly, exactly. I, I remember the first time i stood up to speak the microphone was shaking so much. I was so terrified to stand up in front of crowds that I had to actually hold the hat, hold the microphone against my chest, put my hand in my pocket, which resulted in looking like I got a ferret in my pocket because my hand was shaking in my pocket, and 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 pushing past. And 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 uh, I think it's Chris Vallotton makes this great statement. He says, "The hounds of hell bark loudest." on the path to your greatest destiny amen what a statement that yeah. i love that can i write that down so put that in, somebody put that in the text right now <laughs> <laughs> and we're, i mean i know we all know it but many times the place where you feel the most resistance is the place where there's the most fruitfulness because yeah. when you go that route you know you're going a route that puts you in dependency on god and yeah. god doesn't yeah. build on our strengths he builds on our surrendered heart Yes. It's our yieldedness where the strength of God is manifest, not in our own human abilities. Claire. Yeah. Yeah. Well, God says it's when we're weak that we're strong, Come on. you know, yeah. and, and um, I think the other thing is that if you, um, it, you, you can miss opportunities, you know, we've talked about opportune moments. You can miss opportunities for expansion in your life by deciding that well that's not me you know that's not my area of ministry or that's not you know that's not something that i i'm called to do you know and i think sometimes we we super spiritualize things as well we think well i am a this you know and you know we do it in the church as well don't we i'm a prophet i'm an evangelist i'm a something else um and if we're not careful we can miss the opportunity for god to use us in different ways show his grace through us and and build character in us as well and you know we didn't all get to this place of you know being prophets and leading teams and things like that overnight you know it wasn't like one day god said right you're a prophet and and you know and and suddenly there was a team and they wanted you to lead them and you know and you you got called to to preach in different countries and things that's not the way it is you know god has built us over the years doing all kinds of rubbish stuff as well. You know, the things that, that really build your character, the things where you, you thought you were going to do a great job and, and you didn't, you did a terrible job. And, you know, <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of mess that's gone behind us and all kinds of opportunities for growth um, and dependency on God and for God to show us his, um, you know, him turning up and using us despite our weakness. You know, I mean, I... As a, a younger person, I would have been terrified to stand up in front of anybody and, and say anything, you know. And I can remember the very, very first time I prophesied, um, I was about 14. And I didn't even know that's what it was. Nobody, like, we, I didn't wasn't in a prophetic environment or anything. There was no other people around me to say, oh, yes, you're obviously a prophet, you know. It was just, uh, you know, I've, I I only know that now looking back and thinking, oh, that's what that was, you know. And, I, you know, I, I it was actually painting something in the front of a church, you know, when that was first the all the rage, you know, in the charismatic world, um, painting a picture at the front of the church. And I painted this thing and it was absolutely terrifying so terrifying I've never done it again (laughs) but it was kind of the beginning of a journey of the prophetic in my life which has probably taken 30 years to get to this place you know but you know we've all done um we've all had those opportunities to you know I've I'm not an evangelist and yet I put myself in places where there is um evangelism I think that's one of the ones that we say a lot isn't it what that we leave evangelism very much to the evangelists when we're all called to to bring people to Christ, to share the gospel. 
Um, and we, we don't, you know, we, we, don't, we don't do it because we, we kind of silo everything off. We think, well, they're the evangelists. We'll leave it to the specialists, you know. And then God, God's saying, actually, there's a whole load of things that you are missing, the opportunities you're missing to see my power at work in your life um, and to see my, uh, my strength made perfect in your weakness. Um, you know, because we, we, we decide, you know, we pre-decide what we're going to do, what we're going to not do for God. Um, so yeah, so yeah. Sorry, I've gone off on one there, but no, you <laughs> just rein it back in. <laughs> you haven't gone off on what? I mean, yeah, you actually reminded me, Claire. There, there, there was an occasion we were out. Forget where we were now, but we were doing doing missions in another nation, and uh, the team. There were, I had about twenty odd young people with me, and divided them into teams and said, "Right, you're all going to your cell group meetings," and I picked the most scared person to lead each team. And, and I said, so you're leading. I said, the only thing that you must do is you must minister to the sick. You share what, as long as what you share obviously needs to be biblical, but I want you to minister to the sick. I'll never forget, there's one guy, German guy, and he was as timid as a mouse, really. And I stayed back. So, said, you're not coming. So, no, I'm staying back having a rest. You guys are going to go and do the work. And they came back, and each team came back, and I sat in the, in the flat where we were all staying, and each one came in, timid as mice, sitting there, shaking their heads, saying, what's wrong? And this German guy will never forget it. And he looked at me and he's, he's shaking his head, said, what's the matter? He said, we prayed for a lady who'd had no feeling in her legs for 14 years. And the feeling came back in her legs. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget the look in his eye. Did he look me square in the face? And he said, this stuff's real. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the thing mm -hmm. of it is, is this. 99% of the resistance that you're facing to go that route is because the devil doesn't want you to discover the authenticity and exactly. rely reliability of the manifest power of God in your life. Amen. He wants you to live below your identity. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll do yeah. his best to keep you away from it. So those places you're most scared to go are probably the very places that you're meant to be manifesting God. In Jesus' name. Goodness, our time Amen. is gone. Mark, do you want to pray for us before we go? Yeah, yeah. So, Lord, thank you for this morning. Uh, Father God, thank you that we've encountered you as we've been listening. Lord God, thank you that you're going to encounter us when, when we listen to this again. And, Lord God, thank you for the ripples of encounter that are going to go out as we go about our day. And, Lord God, thank you that actually you, you give us our identity that actually we pray for our ears right now, that our ears would actually listen to your voice and no other voice. Come on. And that actually we, we step out into the identity and into those places that actually we're going to say, we're going to say, did you see God do that? It's real. Yeah. It's authentic. It's authentic. And then it becomes a lifestyle. And then it becomes that's actually our way of life rather than just a, a nice story here and there. So, Lord God, thank you for changing our lifestyle today. Thank you for changing our mindset today. And, Lord God, we give you permission to say who we are today and our ears are ready, willing, and able to listen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bless you all. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Claire. It's always a joy to be with you all. And we will be back on Friday or somebody will be back on Friday. So God bless you. See you soon. Bye. Bye.